welcome to part four. Um, so now I'm working on, still working on the window holes for the bottom part of the saucer section. Started a few on this side. I was originally just going to work counterclockwise, but I decided instead that I would, you know, concentrate on the back right here in the place that folks are least likely to notice if I mess it up. <laughs> so, just to get some more practice. Um, but it's going fine. I think it's, I think it's all going to be good. We shall see. Um, so I had some plans for the base. I believe I mentioned before that I'm going to be using one of these gold stands. Um, when you get the gold enterprises new, they're bolted into the package. Um, through those two little posts there. So I thought it might be a good idea to use that um, to mount the stand to something else because my plan is to basically put uh, like a toggle switch. Uh, this is just an old stand I got on eBay. It probably won't ever get used. But uh, my plan is to put like a toggle switch back here um, and then an AC adapter jack probably probably back there um, but then the problem with that would be since this is hollow the uh, wires would just be exposed or flopping around underneath so my solution to that was to buy so since this base is seven by seven basically I decided to buy an eight inch uh, plaque or base off of Amazon so I have this eight inch basswood circle that's got this nice edging on it and as you can see ta-da! I uh, screwed it to the base I'm gonna paint the uh, the wooden plaque thingy uh, black but I just wanted to get the screw holes lined up first and make sure everything was working like it was supposed to so what I did was I took this and I held it down where I wanted it to be and then I took a really skinny screwdriver and I just went down the bottom of the hole and wiggled it around and did it on both, making sure that this didn't move at all so it would be exactly where I wanted it. And then I um, drilled a 1 16th hole. Um, and I also marked the drill off looking at the screws, how deep they are. So I marked off the drill with a piece of painter's tape just so I didn't go too deep in the wood and uh, drilled a couple pilot holes and those screws that you use uh, the, the screws that come from here are the same kind of screws that are used to hold up together almost the entire thing uh, the standard enterprise screws I suppose um, and they're machine screws so what I did was I just took my uh, little Phillips head and just kind of after I um, after I drilled the, the, the tiny 1 16th hole, I just kind of reamed out the wood a little bit uh, on, on each of the pilot holes just so that the uh, machine screw would have something to grab onto. And it screwed right in there. This is basswood, which is a pretty soft wood anyway, but it's uh, nice and thick. It would look nice finished, but I'm definitely going to paint it. Um, but yeah, so this was, I think, seven or eight bucks on Amazon. Um, so that would be my suggestion, unless you have something fancier in mind. But I figured it, the base, it already has a base, so I don't want to be too much basier than, than this. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, I did the putty thing and sanded it off, which you can see here, and like as I suspected, it'll need, probably need another application, but um, looks fine, and you know, it's kind of hard to make one of these things perfect, so I'm not going to worry about little things, but <clears throat> obviously doing my best, of course, but yep, so those guys, if, you know, color doesn't match, no big deal. I'm paranoid about LEDs burning out, so my thought was to, rather than doing any, there was going to be some soldering, but rather than doing uh, most of the LEDs soldered, 
my thought was to run them all into a terminal block together. So basically what I'll do is all the wires from a given area of the ship, I'll twist them together, um, the LED wires, twist them together and put run them into a terminal block. And then you screw these little screws down here. And then it closes up these little holes. Get that lined up with the camera. So it clamps down on the wire. And so that way I can just twist all the wires together and then run the power out this way. And that way if a light goes bad, all I have to do is unscrew the screws, untwist the wires, replace the bulb, and twist them back together and stick it back in again. So that is the plan. And there you can see what it looks like clamped down. So basically a little screw comes down and pinches the wire. And it's basically a tunnel all the way through. So if the wires happen to touch inside, that's no big deal because you're just trying to connect them anyway. So as long as you have them screwed in tightly and they're making contact with the metal, then you're good to go. Um, I'm not yet sure if these will fit inside the nacelles, but... If it were up to me, that would be the plan, would be to have one of these in each nacelle as well. So, we will see what happens with that. I'm doing another lighting test with the impulse engine. Um, I put a little piece of tape here to hold the little red lens thing in there. Let's see. Okay. So it's not super impressive because there's a post a support right there, right in front of where the little lens thing is. So the light just has to kind of make its way around. Looks like the LED might have scooted over that way too, not to, the, to the left. But I'll work with it and see what I can figure out. Well, assuming nothing gets in the way, it looks like I might have figured out another way to light the um, impulse engine. So, you can see that's a good deal brighter than it was before. It looks like there's enough room if I can avoid that screw post when I'm putting it back together to run it up behind there and have it directly inside here. You can see kind of the bulbs facing to the left but I'll definitely take it it's definitely better than nothing and definitely probably better than what I had before so anyway we'll see how it goes oh here you can see what it looks like so just kind of in there sideways and push down so I've got the base all painted I did that with some latex paint I happened to have laying around because <clears throat> I wasn't able to find any spray paint from Amazon that was available overnight so I figured I'd try I only had a little bit in the can but I figured I'd give it a try and it had enough to cover it so Instead, what they did have available overnight was something called, like, Krylon Starry Night. It's some kind of crazy metal flake glitter paint that you spray over your um, regular color coat. So, hopefully it'll uh, be pleasantly sparkly. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Okay, so over here, I've added a couple more sections of windows. And also I put on more of the modeling putty just to cover up the spots that were slightly uh, concave. And then I'll be able to sand those off and hopefully it'll be nice and flat. Um, I, had, <laughs> I wanted to put the Arboretum in here, but then I realized that there wasn't any room for it, unfortunately. But I thought that would be kind of fun to scratch off the gold paint, you know, in an Arboretum-shaped uh, grid. And then uh, light it with a blue LED from from underneath. <laughs> I 
but the posts are way too many posts for that, unfortunately. So it does appear that the terminal block piece will fit inside the nacelle, but I think I'd probably have to split the two halves and then just kind of put one up the one side and one up the other side. Um, I was also thinking of grinding down the tops and maybe some of the uh, extra runway we have in there before you get to the metal contacts. Not all the way down, but I think I could make them slightly more compact just for the nacelles so that it would fit in there better. But anyway, that's pretty much it for today. Um, hope this is helpful, and thanks for watching.